All right, so let's look at the geologic column. Uh, it's a composite from correlation of millions of places around the world. Remember, we're correlating all around the world, and we can de decipher the data to create one geologic composite column. And it represents Earth's entire Earth's history. And so we'll, the way we're going to look at it, we're going to have these eons, eras, periods, epochs, and then there's these ages and stages, which are which are uh, the smallest grouping of time. So we go from largest groupings to smallest groupings, right? And um, if we kind of look back at some of the early ideas uh, uh, on geologic time, it was really some, from some Italian naturalist who envisioned the geologic column in terms of fossils, right? So the presence or, or not the presence of fossils. And so based on that, they had these primary rocks. So remember, we're always going to start at the bottom. I'll always start at the bottom. I have to remind myself even even now, but you always want to start at the bottom and work your way up. So the primary, so they have this, this the, the, these Italian naturalists had these ideas of primary rocks. And those rocks were rocks with no fossils, no fossils whatsoever. Today with our new technology, uh, we do find bacteria, archaea, soft-bodied organisms, but primarily the rocks down in here would be the rocks with very little to no fossils. And so um, uh, the, then as we went along here, we, they, they had rocks with fossils, and they call those secondary rocks, tertiary rocks, quaternary rocks, right? So these are the rocks with fossils. And one important concept here is that we're going to have this eon. We, we're going to call this a phanerozoic eon. So if you remember what fan meant right here, like phaneritic texture, visible. And zoic is life or animals, right? So th these are rocks that have fossils. But then uh, the secondary rocks, well, these fossils were, were alien. We didn't recognize them. They, they didn't look like modern uh, uh, organisms, right? Especially when we looked at dinosaurs. So mostly uh, 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 we had the, the, the dinosaurs or rep large reptiles in this one. And over here we had those, those trilobites, brachiopods, those are crinoids, a variety of different organisms in this Paleozoic era, and really some strange fish, par par particularly the armored fish, which are we don't really have or see anything like that today. And then as we move along, uh, uh, the tertiary rocks and quaternary rocks, where these are mammals, uh, but for the mammals that occurred uh, in the tertiary rocks, well, these are the ones that are uh, a little bit more archaic. They kind of look like mammals. Uh, um, uh, but they're a little bit different. And then finally, the quaternary are the modern-looking mammals uh, and, even some, and even some of those Ice Age mammals that we see in the fossil record, like the, the California State Fossil, which is uh, the saber-toothed cat. In fact, I have one back over here. The California State Fossil is, is a Smilodon. Smilodon is a... Um, uh, iconic California here, right? So uh, with the big sabers, and it really is a cat. There's no such thing as a tiger. Tigers are in Asia. Uh, cats are in North America. Now continuing on with the geologic column, when we look at the primary rocks, because they have very little to no fossils, right? Uh, we're we're going to call these rocks down here part of these Precambrian. And the reason we call them Precambrian is because uh, they occur before the Cambrian period. And we know that the Cambrian period is the first time life developed hard body parts. So there's a radiation of life here, really a, a adaptation of new environments here. So anything that occurs before the Cambrian, we call pre-Cambrian. And remember, I had an abbreviation that I used earlier, which was a symbol that was like that. That refers to the pre-Cambrian. Remember that the eon we go back up here, the eon is the largest grouping of time, and we're going to have two primary eons in this, in this Precambrian time. And the, there's going to be an older Archean eon and a younger Proterozoic eon. Uh, some people have this other time here called the Hadean, and your book talks about the Hadean. And the Hadean goes to about maybe uh, 4.0 billion years ago, 4.0 GA. And the reason we use that is um, it's a time when uh, uh, meter bombardment slowed down because the early Earth, right? Remember, it was so it was you know basically uh, too hot to form rocks. There was so much heat flow 
uh, from from gravitational energy uh, uh, as a planet started forming. Planetesimals, meteor bombardment, crashing into the planet. And there were many short-lived radioisotopes that are, they burned up their half-lives, right? They're all gone. But when they were active back in the early Earth system, they were, they were generating heat. So we had a very high heat flow on the planet. And, and the planet might have been like a magma ocean. It was too hot to form rocks. We know that some places form rocks because we do have minerals. In fact, the oldest mineral is a zircon crystal that dates to 4.4 dates to billion years old. And so we know there were rocks at, in the early Earth, but they were probably obliterated by, 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 by again, by that meteor. So many impacts, right, uh, colliding into the planet. Here, the age of the Earth is about 4.57 GA, billion years ago. We'll call this age of meteorites because we get this age from some of the only rocky particles in our solar system at this time. And those were the planetesimals represented um, hard, heavy, heavy atom objects in our solar system. And they, they accreted together to form larger planetesimals. These planetesimals crashed into each other to form small planets. And then the larger these small planets got, the more gravitational pull they had, the bigger the planet became by accretion, right? So we, we get ages from really the only rocks that were around at that time. And they're giving us an age of 4.57 billion years old. And I'll show you how we do that um, in the next series of videos. Now, um, uh, an important time here is the boundary between uh, the Proterozoic Eon here and the older Archean Eon, and that's at 2.5 billion years ago. And at this time, one of the things that, that we certainly notice is that we have uh, uh, really kind of modern plate tectonics occurring here. So we see this modern, modern style tectonics really, really forming here. And then the Proterozoic, remember Proto means what came before and Zoic are, is life. So this is uh, uh, many single celled organisms, um, lots of these algal mats called stromatolites, uh, very common in the rock record here. Uh, we see a change in the oxygen, the atmospheric content of the earth, CO2 decreases and, and oxygen increases, right? So we see, we see a lot of photosynthesis. We start oxygenate, oxygenating the atmosphere. Then as we go along, uh, this Cambrian explosion, Cambrian period, really occurs around 542 million years ago, 542 MA. And uh, that begins our Phanerozoic Eon, right? So in terms of eons, we have the Archean, the Proterozoic, and the Phanerozoic. The errors, these are going to be basically par based primarily on life, maybe extinction events, some event that's occurring. So remember we talked about the, the Paleozoic, which is uh, uh, sometimes it's called the Age of Fishes, right? Many different species of fishes uh, developed. And then um, Age of Reptiles, the Mesozoic Era, and then Cenozoic Era, you can think of it as mammals dominated here. But just to put some numbers here, this one here is at about 251 million years ago. That's a boundary between the Paleozoic and Mesozoic. This one's right around 65 and a half, 65.5 million years ago. That's, uh, and we know that very well, uh, primarily from dating volcanic ashes and deposits, um, and also uh, debris uh, from uh, the asteroid impact that occurred at this time that, that finished off the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs probably were already dying off. There were many species that had already gone extinct, but this was pretty much the final below the meteor impact. And then um, the Cenozoic era goes to the present, up to today. But note that in the Cenozoic, uh, when I was going to college, we, we had a, uh, we used to still use this word tertiary as, as a period. But today, uh, we, we divide the tertiary into two periods an older Paleogene period, and a younger um, Neogene period. If we look at some of the ages, so the, the boundary between the Neogene and Paleogene period is about 23 million years ago. And there's an important um, epoch that I'll talk about here called the, let's put the Miocene here. Miocene epoch. This is a time here in California where um, lots of, Sedimentary rocks are being formed here in the coast ranges, uh, specifically rocks related to um, uh, California oil here, in, uh, the Monterey Formation. But then as we go to the Quaternary Period, we're over to about 2.6 million years ago. And then obviously at the top here, we're at zero today. So those are just some numbers for us to think about. We'll get 
two, two more of those as we go along. Thank you.